the throne of grace we have one prayer request and it's from sister Marcia Lawson Beckford she'll be doing a surgery this Thursday and she's asking for our prayers but also if there's any burning desire that you have any request that you have of the Lord we're gonna put it to him now and we're gonna ask Deacon Martin to Come and pray for us and also ask for the Lord's direction on the service today. And we're also asking for prayer for Deacon Scott and his family who lost a nephew, a neighbor, a nephew, nephew, nephew this week. And so we're going to put those prayer requests to the Lord, Deacon Martin. In the meantime, you're also being asked to call Sister Chantal at 356-0308 if you know of a two-bedroom in the Patrick City or Dehaney Park area. Again, forward the information to Sister Chantal at 356-0380. Deacon Martin. Praise God. Let us approach the show of grace together. Praise God. Hallelujah. Great God, we exalt you this morning. Hallelujah. We magnify your name. There's none like you. Hallelujah. Not to be compared to you. Oh God, we thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness towards us, which is better than life. Oh God, as we come before you this morning, God, we know, God, that there's nothing that is too hard for you to do. Oh God, you said we must cast our cares upon you because you care for us. So this morning, we come before you, God, knowing, God, that you are the omnipotent God. God, you are the God that is all powerful. You are the omniscient God. You do all things. And you are the omnipresent God. God, you are everywhere. So even right now, God, I pray, God, that you touch God, Jesus, even the doctors who are preparing, hallelujah, to do surgery, God, and Sister Marcia this Thursday. I pray, God, that you will be, God, in that hospital room. I pray, God, that you will be the hands, God, you will stir the hands, you lead the hands of the doctors as they do that operation. On your love and God, that you come out, God, successful. Jesus. Uh, God, and at the end of the day, also God, you will get the glory the out of it. I pray of right now, Jesus God, Jesus, for today's service. Oh, God, we have had a good God. time we this morning. Jesus. God, we have learned from your that word. You oh, God, that we must God, worship you. you. And if we fail to worship you, God, the rocks will take up. So help us, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. To come this morning into your presence with thanksgiving and into your course with praise. So come with a worship on our hearts. Oh, God, I pray right now, God, for this God, service, God, God recovery, and for Jesus. every person, God, who well, attends this God, service, and will live to give I pray God that you'll touch the hearts. To give you Let honor, no God. person leave, God, the, the same way that they came into in the service. This morning, God, I pray right now, God, for the moderator, that your hands will so rest upon him mightily. Us, God, oh, God, that whatever he do, how he leads the service, will be, God, according to your will and according to your glory. I pray right now, God, for the minister of the word, this month, that the word that will come from his mouth, God, will come from the throne of God. Let your will be done this morning in this service as we look to you, the author, the finish of our faith. Have your way. Oh God, every person who will come in here who is distressed, every person who comes in who is sad, who is depressed, every person who comes in who is feeling way down, that your presence, God, will lift a standard in this place this morning in the name of Jesus. We come against every wild of the enemy and we cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way as we look to you, the great God of heaven. In Jesus' name we pray this morning. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, I'll ask that we turn our Bibles to 2 Samuel chapter 9. And we'll read all the verses except 12, maybe. If you found it, say amen. 
Second Samuel's Second Samuel chapter nine, and we'll read together. And David said, "Is there yet any that that is left of the house of Saul, that I may shew him? Have we found it? Yes. Okay, bless God. Let's start over. And David said, "Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may shew him kindness for Jonathan's sake?" And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called unto to David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there yet any of the house of Saul that I may shew the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto king Jonathan, said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Meshir, the son of Amiel, in Lodibar. Then king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Meshir, the son of Amiel, from Lodibar. And when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence him. And David said, Mephibosheth, he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely shew you the kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of, the, of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, what is thy servant, that thou should look upon such a dead dog? The king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruit that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread all way at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then Ziba said unto the king, According to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall the servant do. As for Mephibosheth, he shall, as for Mephibosheth, sorry, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's son. Verse 13, And Mephibosheth dwelled in Jerusalem and did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both feet. Now, as the Lord, you know, dropped this uh, scripture in, in my, my spirit, I, I thought about it. And, you know, this scripture resembles just the kindness that the Lord has towards us. Um, if, if we might know the story of David well, and we may have heard about Lodibar in present day, when we talk about Lodibar, we know that it's a place that is lacking, a place that is dry, a place that uh, is, is just empty. And you know, this is where the Lord has brought us from, many of us, even though we don't necessarily deserve it, even though we don't deserve it, because I know for myself that the mercies that God has extended to me and continues to extend to me, it's not something that I have deserved, but because of his greatness, because of his kindness, because of his love. And you know, when I, when I look back at the, you know, this, the service, why look upon a dead dog like me? Because you know, I've gone through my trials, I've gone through my struggles, but because of God's mercy, because of his grace, I mean, I am standing before you today and nothing is more amazing more than the love that God has for each and every one of us. And we know even David has, has had his trials in the Bible, but because of this covenant that he had with God, and it's the same covenant that God has with each and every one of us, he will not fall short on his word. He will not go back on his word. So if he promised this to, to us, it will be delivered unto us. But you know, we're walking in, in, this, in this earth and we are so much in need of his guiding hands. We're so much in need of his love. We're so much needing every second of the day, every minute of the day. We are in need of his guidance. And it's for that reason I want us to sing this song, Guide Me, O Great Jehovah, because we can't go through this, this world without the mighty God holding our hand and leading us home. It's 
it's him number 300 265 
praise God. Can we just call the name of Jesus? Jesus. Let's do it one more time. Jesus. Let's do it yet another time. Jesus. Let's do it four more times. Jesus. 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 Jesus, hallelujah. Let's clap our hands to the great God and King. Hallelujah. hallelujah. There is none like him. Do you believe that? There is none like him. All the other gods, they are the works of men. He is the most high God. There is none like him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, all oh, the other gods, they are the worst of men. You are the most high God. There is none like all the other gods. All the other gods, they are the worst. They are the worst of men. You are. You are the most high God. There is. They are the works of man. They are the works of man. You are. You are the most high God. There is. There is the most high God. All the other gods. All the other gods. They are the works of man. They are the works of man. You are. You are the most high God. Oh! 
call him Jesus, What do you call him? Jesus, What do you call him? Jesus, 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 What do you call him? Jesus, what do you call him? Jesus, call him. 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 Call him. Jesus, call him. What do you call him? Jesus, what do you call him? Jesus, what do you call him? What do you call him? Jesus, call him. Jesus, 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 bless you if you're able you may be seated it's so good to be in the house of the Lord in the presence of the King of Kings among the people of the Most High God there is none like him oh my God in his presence there is fullness of joy and at his right hand pleasures forevermore it feels so good to worship him feel so good to experience his awesome presence praise god praise god god bless you richly i want to take the time to just greet everyone in the mighty name of jesus there is none like him all the saints across the building i'm going to invite pastor to come and do the official greetings but just want to greet you and welcome you all the saints and visitors online in our midst god bless you Praise God. Bishop Daly, please come and greet this congregation. Praise God. Come on, we praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, we praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, the spirit of worship is in the house. The spirit of worship is free. Put your hands together and glorify God with a clap offering of praise. Praise God. Praise God. It is because of his mercies why we're here this morning, this morning you know. Amen. We are singing we are shouting we are skipping and dancing it is because of his mercies we should have and could have easily been removed by him because of our many failures but we are here and so it behoves every one of us to magnify and glorify him put your hands together one more time amen and let's magnify god isn't he good isn't he can we use the word awfully good <laughs> he's wonderful Oh, can we praise the Lord? There, there's an old hymn. And if you could probably take a quick verse out of it. It says, years I spent in vanity and pride. Caring not my Lord was crucified. Knowing not it was for me he died at Calvary. We're not going to sing it like how the 
Catholic or Baptist, you know, all the kind of have a, but we're going to do it Pentecostal style, you know, just worship. Everybody stand up. Years I, the, the chorus said, Mercy there was great and grace was free. You know, we have a right to worship God. Pardon fear, oh hallelujah, was multiplied to me. Fear my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Amen. I don't know what number in the hymn, but we know that one. It's a good old one. Years. Come on. Years I spent in vanity. That's right. And pride. Caring not my Lord was crucified. That's right. No, it was for me. He died at Calvary. Mercy there. Oh, mercy there was great and great. Yes. Was free. My God. There was multiplied to be Oh, my What a merciful God shouldn't have been here, but thank God. Oh, yes, Lord, she there was great and grace. She got Thank God. What a God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, blessed Savior. Mighty God. It is because of his mercies why we are not consumed. Why we are here this morning. Why we can sing and shout. Put your hands together and glorify him. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. I greet the household of faith in the precious name of Jesus. Every saint in the house today. Every saint in your homes, wherever you are across the island. Every saint that has joined us uh, via the world wide web, wide web. You're streaming this morning or this afternoon. I greet you 
in Jesus name then every visitor in the house and every visitor on the web we greet you thank you for joining us and making faith chapel of the faith apostolic ministries your place of worship today the Lord bless you the Lord keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you is there a visitor in the house right now you're not a member of this the Lord bless you, sir. The Lord bless you. Come on, we put our hands together. Any more visitors? Mighty God, mighty God. God bless you, ma'am. Good to have you. Good to have you, sir. Good to have you, ma'am. The Lord bless you real good. And we appreciate your taking the time to come to be with us here today. God bless you. And we love you. In G come on, we put our hands together one more time for all the visitors that are in the house. Praise God. Praise God. And just before I take my seat, I really want to leave a quick word of an announcement. Uh, this Wednesday, amen, and every Wednesday going forward. So we have brought together all the different times of fasting. And we are going to have our corporate fasting on Wednesday. Now, if for any reason you have other fasting endeavors, other things you want to fast about, fine. But do not put off Wednesday, Wednesdays for anything else. This is the time when as a church, we are going to join our forces. We are going to band together to seek the face of the Lord for some things, for some people, for situations. And we want to be united in our approach. So starting this Wednesday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., every saint we want us to be together in fasting and in prayer now it's going to be bible study night as usual on wednesday and we thank god we are on a series with deacon uh, marlon bailey and god be praised we are having a great time i believe we go again this wednesday and very soon he's going to be wrapping up but we thank god for the great word that is being imparted to us but just before Bible study, there is prayer meeting. I'm making a very special appeal to all the saints. Those that are here, those that are tuned in. Amen. Those that are a part of the faith apostolic ministries abroad. We are asking us to tune in. We are going to be getting some prayer requests. And we are going to be praying together between the hour 6 to 7. It's prayer meeting time. Come on, we put our hands together, everybody. Amen. As we herald the unity as we pray together. A few weeks ago, we were on fasting and prayer for three days. And we geared ourselves and we were on target to seek the face of God in fasting and prayer. Going forward every Wednesday, this Wednesday and every Wednesday hereafter, I'm asking us to be together between 6 and 7 in prayer on Zoom. And if the platform is overflowing, Minister Martin, we will stream. And so we can join whether on the platform, the Zoom platform, or on YouTube. I want us to be together on that. So we are going to be praying between 6 and 7, beginning this Wednesday, and we are going to be fasting. And so we give God thanks for that. I thank you. And we look forward for the unity of the brethren as we seek the face of the Lord for great things. Don't forget, we are not going to meet before that time. So don't forget, write it down. Have it indelibly imprinted in our minds. Wednesday, 6 o'clock, between 6 and 7, prayer meeting. All of us must be there. And then we go right into Bible study. And lastly... We had a great time in youth service Friday past where Elder Lincoln Bryan from out of Canada via Zoom we were together and he got into some issues that are confronting our youngsters. Amen. About pornography and uh, masturbation and all the things that we don't like to talk about over the mic, you know, like that. Yeah, yes. And he got into it and he was very much open and there will be part two this friday so every young person and when i say young i'm talking about those that feel young those that your body's young even if you are 60 
Uh, but you know, you, there is that struggle in the flesh and with that kind of thing. Troubling the mind. Why are you laughing, Sister Fuller? Is me laughing, eh? <laughs> eh? Oh, good. All of us need to be there, and I invite us to be a part of youth service this Friday. Amen. It is only called youth service, and they did say between 12 and 25, but we changed that this morning. It's between 12 and about 100 or so, and so we can all be there to be led, to be directed, to be advised, to be taught, amen, as to how to overcome some of the addictions that are there even in the body of Christ. Amen. So God bless you. Let's continue to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. As I take my seat in a few Sundays from now, virtually, we are going to have some services on Sunday nights. Yes, we are going to. So we're not going to come out into the tent because, you know, we still want to. But you, you don't long for like a little Sunday night service and get a preacher from there and we, we, we're going to have some of that. But just before we kick that off, I want to put us on notice. That is missions convention time. I know you say keep it quiet, but I can't keep it. It's in my bones. I can't keep it quiet. I know you say don't promote it a certain way. because, But, we, but don't we in church now? So they, oh, we can't have mission convention. If we can't keep it like this. See him, sir. So here is what's going to happen. We're having some preachers coming. They're not coming from foreign. Don't worry about COVID. They're coming from sin. And, and seeing this. And seeing dress and all around town. They're coming. And we are going to have missions convention in November. And before I even got to fine tune some things with the missions director, they planned it out a long time. So we're going to have missions convention. But hello, here how it's going to be done. Quickly, as quick as I can. Here it's going to be done. It's going to be in the mornings. <laughs> it's going to be just like this. So we're going to have missions convention over two Sundays. And group one missions convention. Group two missions convention. Group three missions convention. Group four missions convention. We're going to ban some people from being in more than one group in that time, you know, because church going full. Everybody in group one going to come out. Plus visitors. So we may have to ban some people. Oh, everybody looking around. <laughs> Them don't mind. But we're going to have missions convention. And if we do it under the constraints, under the established protocols, we're not breaching, we're not breaking, we're not defying. We're working with what we have. But as we said earlier, there's something about God that God had. If we don't do it, stones going to cry out. And me not making no stone take my place. So I go and come. And all the group one members that from March you don't come church. Try come for missions convention. All the group two, three, four members that don't come church from March. Come next month. You're going to see say, we can go through. The Lord bless you. You're going to hear more about this. Let's continue to worship him in spirit and in truth. And in the beauty of holiness. It's good to see you, Sister Grizzle. God bless you. Bless you, Mother Grizzle. It's good to see you. Come on, put our hands together for Mother Grizzle. It's good to see you in the name of the Lord. Sister Daly is not here this morning. I greet her in her absence. Let's put our hands together for Sister Daly. God bless you, Sister Daly. We miss you. Amen. But see you later in the name of the Lord. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you, Bishop Daly. I have here a thank you card. It says, Denise Green, Punchy, along with Daniela Mills, Ashley, and family, would like to thank Fam family for your kind and encouraging words, comforting prayers, 
and phone calls during our time of bereavement. It is greatly appreciated. God bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, when the Lord Jesus was walking this earth, anybody that came in contact with him, they were never the same. Hallelujah. It is still the same today, you know. Anybody that comes in contact with Jesus, they don't remain the same. But while he was here, he walked past a crippled man. Crippled man get healed. Blind man. Blind man get healed. Dead man. Dead man get healed. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Hallelujah. When they fed the multitude, change their attitude. Come now, Mr. Marshall, I look for me and know the one doing it. When he was reading and I've been feeding on the precious words of God, marvelous story, so full of glory. Yeah. 
ushers to come at this time. Ask you to do what you do. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're, we're not going to be on this earth forever. We're just pilgrims passing through. Praise God. Let's not get adjusted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You can bow your heads while I pray before the ushers proceed. Lord Jesus, we praise and glorify your awesome name. We just want to acknowledge your greatness and thank you for you know, the privilege to be a part of your family. Thank you for your awesome presence that we feel in this place. And I pray right now as it's time for the ushers to collect the tithes and offerings that you will you know, bless what is given. Bless those who have and those who have not. Give us a heart, Lord. Hallelujah to give in Jesus' name. Let it you know, go to the furtherance of your kingdom and glorifying of your name in Jesus' name. You may proceed.
true Lord Jesus keep it true keep it true Lord Jesus keep it true but there's a rain and a rain and a victory and a victory to be won Lord keep me power power so wonderful always looking out for us hallelujah praise God you may be seated hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah let's just lift our hands one more time glorify the Lord praise the great name Lord Jesus praise the great name Lord Jesus Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, I'm, I'm excited about all that's happening in our local assembly. We're fasting, we're praying, we're reading the word. Terrible things are going to happen. And I know strongholds are already shaking and being broken down. Our hearts are being converted, our minds are being transformed. Praise God. Hallelujah. As we read through the Psalms, we realize that we're not the only ones that have had difficult times. We're not the only ones that have had to, you know, ask for God's help, defend us from enemies. Praise God. We recognize, we're reminded that it is a good thing to sing praises to God. Hallelujah. And to worship his great name. Hallelujah. Right now we're going to hear from the Lord. 
yet again. We can never be tired of hearing his word. Praise God. And uh, can just sing one time. We need to hear from you. We need a word from you. Hallelujah. We need to...
the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 22, and we read verse. That's Matthew chapter 22, and we'll read from verse 37. Sorry, we'll read from verse 36 down to about verse 39. Praise the Lord. If you find it, you can just praise the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'll give you a few minutes. Amen. Bless God. Um, I'll just read and you follow. Um, it reads just thus. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm starting at 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question tempting him and saying master which is the great or the greatest commandment in the law jesus said unto him thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind this is the first and the great or the greatest commandment and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophet. I am going to be exalting you for a short period of time on the topic hung on love. Amen. Can you pray for me? Praise God. Praise God. We thank you again, mighty God, for another privilege, another opportunity to sit at the table, to be fed from almighty God. You have chosen your son, your servant, Brother Smith, to break bread to us today, this afternoon. I pray, mighty God, that you will rest your hands, rest your power upon him right now, that he will speak under the unction and anointing of the Spirit of Almighty God and break bread to your people. Use him as only you alone can, because you alone know the need. You alone know the hurt. You alone know where we need to get some rubbing. You alone know where exactly we need to... Uh, place ourselves so that we can be blessed abundantly by you. So we ask that you will use him to minister to us, mighty God. Touch the ears of your people, that we will open our ears, that we will open our hearts, uh, so that as the word come in, we will comprehend and move to do as thus saith the Lord. Have your own way. Let your perfect will be done. Grant unto him the freedom, clear the atmosphere, and let your perfect will be accomplished in the house for the remainder of this service. Have your own way. We give you thanks. We magnify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you, sir. You may be seated, everyone. Amen. Bless the Lord. I'm not going to be long. Um, in the business world, there is this concept that they teach us. It is called the 80-20 rule. 
the 80-20 rule. And, and what they're saying is that 80% of the issues that you have can be solved by addressing only 20% of the problem. So he's saying that if you address 20% of the problem, then 80% of, e of your issues will go away. Amen. And that is the 80-20 rule. I want to speak to us today about a 99-1 rule. A 99-1 rule. And what I am proposing is that 99% of your problems, of your challenges, of your situation can be resolved by doing one thing. The 99 one rule. I put it to you that if we ever develop the love for God as he wants us to and as we ought then 99% of the things that you struggle with will go away. I have pondered it long. I've looked at it. Hallelujah. And I am convinced that it is true. I'm convinced that it's true. Pastor, if I ever learn to love God, if we as a church ever learn to love God, then you can rest easy. You wouldn't have to do much, Pastor, if we ever learn to love God the way we ought. And so, and so here is the Pharisees, and they are, uh, they are tempting Jesus. Amen. Before Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, silenced them. Amen. They came to him. They were lawyers and they came to him with some question trying to, 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 to tie him up and he silenced them. And I would have thought that the Pharisees would have been happy because the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, don't, they don't really get along. They don't really see eye to eye. And so I thought they would have been happy that Jesus silenced the, the Sadducees. But no, they were filled with envy and grief because they had tried for how many years and couldn't, and couldn't do it. So instead of being happy, they were jealous. And so this question now was asked out of the spirit, you know, of tempting God. Amen. Bless God. And what Jesus said to them, he says that, that the law that, amen, that, the greatest commandment is the love for God. Amen. 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 Bless God. And, and what he said is that upon these two commandments, love for God and love for the brethren, hang all the laws on the prophet. The entire Old Testament. And by extension, the entire scripture, the Bible, is hanged on these two commandments. Amen. Bless God. It's like they come. It's like if, if they, 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 it's like somebody come to you and and asks you a question, and you said, "Well, love thy neighbor as thyself, and love the Lord thy God with all thine heart." And you say, well, I don't quite get it. And so Jesus said, all right, you don't get it. I am going to write 66 books to explain it to you. So that after you read these 66 books, amen, 
Hallelujah. You will get it. Praise God. Amen. So that love is the theme of the scriptures. Amen. Love is the overarching principles upon, all, upon which all other principles, amen, hang. Amen. Bless God. Amen. Bless God. And so the Bible is an expository of love. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Amen. Bless God. And I put it to you that you should be an expository of love. Hallelujah. Every concept in the scripture, amen, was built on the foundation of love. Hallelujah. Everything we do, everything we say should be built upon the concept of love. If you want to be problem free, if you want to be what God wants you to be, you have got to hang on love like the 66 books in the Bible. Touch your neighbor and say, are you hanging on love? Hallelujah. Is love your motivation uh, for the things that you do? Praise God. Amen. And so the 99 one rule state that everything, every challenges that you face can be answered if you love God uh, the way that you ought to love him. Amen. Bless God. And so when we look at the Bible, the Bible said, love not the world. Amen. Nor are the things of the world. Uh, hallelujah. He said, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how John put it. Uh, but James was a bit more forthright. Amen. And he said, no, he not. Amen. That friendship with the world is in enmity with God. If any man is a friend, is a close associate of the world, he by doing that has made himself the enemy of the Lord. Those are pretty strong statements. Amen. Bless God. James is saying, if you love the world, hallelujah, you are making yourself uh, the enemy of God. Amen. Bless God. Hallelujah. And if most of you is, are like me, then you have struggled with your love for the world. Uh, come on now. Let us be real. Many of us have struggled with the lust of the flesh. Hallelujah. Many of us have struggled with the lust of the eyes. Uh, you never want BMW until you see BMW driving past. Many of us have struggled with the pride of life. Amen. We want to be great. We want to, amen, be put upon a pedestal as it, as it were. Amen. Bless the Lord. All this while God say, if you love it, then you have become my enemy. Hallelujah. Remember I was praying. Let me be honest with you. I was praying to God. And I said, God, how long I've been struggling with this thing. I've been struggling with my love for the world. God, I said, God, I've prayed and fast. And you have not helped me. That's what I said to God. I said, God, you're not, you're not helping me. Amen. It was a watershed moment. I was frustrated. I was overwhelmed. Amen. Bless God. And in prayer, I cried to God and I accused God. I said, God, you are not helping with this. I thought you would have taken it away by now. 
Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm not going to say God spoke back to me. Amen. But the strong impression, amen, that was placed on my heart is this. Is this. He said, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Instead of muster up in all your energy to try and love not the world, why don't you muster up all your energy and put it into loving me? Because if you love me, there is no space. Hallelujah. Oh God, I'm so big. I'm so enough. If you ever love me, there will be no space for you to love the world. It's impossible. It's impossible. I can't explain it. I can't work it out. I don't know why the moment a person begins to love God is the moment that person begins to lose interest in the things of this world. Hallelujah. I don't know. I can't explain it. Ah, but the Bible said it's true. Hallelujah. If your love for God is up, then your love for the world will automatically go down. If your love for the world is up, it goes without saying that your love for God is down. It's like a swing song. Hallelujah. They are never on the same level. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. And so then, we are today, instead of trying so hard not to love the world, which you should do, amen, why don't you try instead to love God the way he wants us to love him? Uh, hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Hallelujah. Amen. It is, a, a, it, it, is like, it is like holiness. Holiness is two things. Holiness is separation and dedication. Amen. Bless God. Hallelujah. Now, it is possible for you to be separated, or should I ask, is it possible for you to be separated and not dedicated to God? Hallelujah. There are some folks, amen, that claim that they are separated. Amen. They claim that they are Muslim. They claim, amen, that they are monk and all other type of things. And they boast themselves on being separated from the things of this world. But unless it is not holiness until dedication comes into the picture. Hallelujah. You have got to be so dedicated to God that it forces you to be separated from the world. So holiness is a dedication that brings a dedication. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so then, if you want, and so then love, love, Love of God, it, it repudiates and it, it dispels the love of the world. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. I tell you, uh, love is a silver bullet uh, that can do anything. Bless your name, God. And so the next thing uh, we want to look at, uh, hallelujah, is ministry. Bless your name, God. Now, the Bible is clear. <clears throat> Sorry, I can't, can't really hear myself. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> no, 
Now the Bible is clear. The Bible is clear. The Bible said that that all of us works is going to be tried. All of us works are going to be tried. And um and then, and some people works are going to be like stubble and hay and wood that will consume or burn when it is tried with fire. The Bible also says that some other person's works are going to be like silver, bronze, and gold that will not burn or will not consume when it is tried with fire. And so I don't know, I don't know what the bronze stand for, Pastor. Probably you can tell me. But I can't identify the work that is bronze. I, neither can I identify the works that is of silver. I don't know. Maybe if I read some more or study some more, then maybe I'll get it. But what I can tell you is that works that is done out of a love for God, well, that works is pure gold. That works is pure gold. And so that love for God, it is the motive, it is the only pure motivation for evangelism. Hallelujah. It is the only pure, it is the only pure motivation for evangelism. Hallelujah. Whatever else your motivation is, it is not pure unless it is done out of love for God or love for the brethren. Hallelujah. And that's why in the book of, in the book of Corinthians, Paul reminds us that though we speak with the tongues of men and of angels, if we don't have love, it profits nothing. So if you want to profit, amen, if you want to profit uh, because of your, your, your calling, your ministry, if you want to be benefit, if you want to benefit from it, you, it has to be intertwined with love. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, though I, though I um, understand all, though I, though I am a prophet, and I understand all mystery, not some, you know, all, all the mysteries of God. I understand all the mystery of God. He said, though I have faith that I can say to a mountain, be thou removed and be thou carried in the midst of the sea. Now, these are some noble things, you know, that every child of God should attain for. But then Paul went back and said, if you don't, if you have all of these things, if you are a prophet, if you have word of wisdom, word of knowledge, eh? if you don't have love, then you are nothing. You are nothing at all. Now, you know what the Bible means when the Bible says you are nothing? Zero. If you don't have the man is a prophet. I, I mean, I'm trying to wrap my mind around this. The man come up and said, Thus say it, the Lord. The man of all knowledge in the world. If he don't have love, the Bible said he is nothing at all. 
Hallelujah. Amen. So then the way of love pers- um, precedes our ministry. Amen. It precedes. It's greater than. Amen. That's why Paul says in the scriptures, he said, if you desire what you perceive as the greatest gift, the greatest gift of all, I can show you a more excellent way. The way of love is more excellent. Hallelujah. It's good to be a pastor. It's good to be a deacon. We are to, uh, ex- we are to, um, we are to like these things. We are to, what is the word, pursue. And I'm not sure if pursue. But the Bible says if a man desire the office of a deacon, he desire a good thing. So these are good things that we must pursue. But we have to understand that love is greater. Love is greater. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I tell you, I wasn't going to be long. Amen. Bless God. So, Jesus. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus, Jesus uh, is in, in St. John. The Bible says that in the beginning was the word. The word, the concepts, the ideas, the precepts even of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And the word became flesh. The precepts, the concepts, the idea, the concept that is engrafted in the scriptures. They never just flow into the scripture like that. They were with God from in the beginning. Bless your name, Jesus. And then the Bible says that the word, the ideas, the concept of which love is the theme, it became flesh. Hallelujah. When the word became flesh, amen, the concept, the precepts, the ideas of God became flesh of which love was the theme. What it means then that Jesus was the personification of love. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel good about this. Jesus was love in the flesh. Hallelujah. Jesus was love in human form. When he walked the seas of Galilee, Peter said, Thus say, thou art the Christ. Ah, but he was more than just the Christ. He was the embodiment of love. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. So Jesus was hung on love. Wait, wait, wait. No, that is wrong. Let me, let, let me change it around. Love was hung on Jesus. Because the Bible said, in all things, he proceeded. And so while the Bible, while the scriptures contain the concept of God, I am not even sure that all the concept of God, pastor, could hold in a this little Bible here. I don't believe that all the concepts of God could be contained in this little Bible here. Ah, but the Bible says that in him, in Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of what God is. Hallelujah. He was, he was love personified. He was the expository of love. If you want to understand love, you have got to look at Jesus. Jesus is the explanation of love. Hallelujah. So if you want to be in love, you have got to be 
in Jesus. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If you want to be in love, you have got to be in Jesus. You have got to wear him like a garment. Hallelujah. The Bible says we need to put on Christ. Hallelujah. Like a, like a priest. Put on his robe. You have to put on Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Unsafe. If you want to be in love, you have got to be in Jesus. So when I say to you, you need to hang on love, what I'm really saying is that you need to hang on Christ. You have to hang on him. You ever go in a closet and you see some hangers? And them, that pool and the, and the clothes, just hang on it. And it just bear them up. You have to hang on Christ. Like that. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. We praise your name, Jesus. And finally, 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 Love is the motivation for worship. Love is the motivation for worship. Amen. Bless God. You know, when you, you, you can tell when somebody loves God. You can tell when somebody is in love with God at this moment. You don't have to pride and prompt them to worship. Worship becomes spontaneous. There is an unction inside that pushes them to worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless God. And, uh, you know, as I think about this, and the rain is falling, so, you know, it makes sense with us. You know, they can tell me 30 minutes, uh, you know, 30 minutes. So, uh, but, but, but it's raining, so, I mean, we're not going nowhere, right? Amen. And so the Bible says that, <clears throat> That when Judah was born, when Judah was born, hallelujah, there was, she, she named him Judah. And she said, no, let me give God the glory. Before Judah was born, there were some other sons that was born. And she named all of them just the same, you know. She named them. And so when Simeon, and so she named one Simeon. She named one Reuben. And she named one Levi. And you know, sometimes, sometimes we allow people to get in our worship. You know, sometimes. And sometimes our motivation for worship has people in it, Pastor. So David said, thou anointest my head with oil. That's a good thing, right? Yeah, you anointed my head with oil. But the fact that God did it in the presence of his enemy, it just, it just make, it 
Jesus, that little sweeter. You know? You know those folks that, that, that is tearing you down? Those folks that don't like you. And then God anoints. And it's just sweet. It's sweet, you know, because your head gets anointed. It's sweet because he prepares that table before. It's, but then the fact that your enemy is there, you just add a little thing to it. Come on, yeah, make it look like say, I'm me one and righteous. It add a little thing to it, man. Because he did it with your enemy, the people that are going to like you, sister Nursey. But that is people in your worship. That is people in your worship. When another son was born, she said, Well, my husband is going to love me now. And so she named him, I think she named him Levi or something like that. But the thing about Judah is that Judah had nothing to do with his enemy, with her enemy. Yes, she still had enemies. But her mind was not on them. The thing with Judah is that it has nothing to do with her friends. It has nothing to do with her husband and the attraction of her husband. It has nothing to do with them that like you. The thing about Judah is that it is as pure and adulterated uh, devotion and aspiration towards God. You know, I have nothing to do with you because you sit beside me. You know, I have nothing to do with you. You hate me. Yes, I know you hate me. But at the moment, you're not even in my thought. You're not even in my mind. I'm in a business with you. It's just about God. It's just about God. And that's what made it pure. And that's what made it special. Because it had nothing to do with humanity. It was just adoration to God. And when you have love, that's a type of worship that we will bring forth. Amen. Well, I'm finished. The rain is still falling, but... I don't have anything else to say. Here and you need the love of God. You have never experienced true love. I'm asking you to come. Look here, better you come. You don't have anywhere going. You can't go out in the rain. So better you just come. If you're here and you have never experienced the love of God, you have never experienced true love. Thank you, ma'am, for coming. I hope that by the day is over, you will experience God in a real and a true way. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Young man, thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. You can experience God's love today. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? You have never known, you have never experienced love like God's love. It up.
praise God. Can we one time just lift our hands and thank God for his word today. Let's thank him for speaking to us another time. Thank him for his love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And if, if there's anyone that has not come forward, but you feel that there is some lacking, some gaps in, in your love for the Lord. I want to invite you, even where you are at this moment, to talk to the Lord. Lay it all before Him and ask Him to help you to love Him the way He ought to be loved. Praise God, praise God. Before the singers take it away, I'm just going to pray right now. Lord Jesus, there is none like you. We really appreciate you, Lord. You never leave us alone. You don't forget us. And Lord, yet again, we have heard from you. We have fallen short, Lord Jesus. We have not loved you the way that you ought to be loved. I pray that you forgive us, Lord Jesus. I pray that you wash us and cleanse our hearts. Lord, we ought not to love the world, nor the things of the world. Hallelujah. But Lord, as the preacher has said, instead of focusing on not loving the world so much, help us to put all our love, to focus our efforts on loving you with all our hearts and the things of this world will grow strangely dim, Lord Jesus. Great God, I pray that you touch every visitor here this afternoon. I pray you touch those who have come forward and those who have remained in their seats. I pray that you touch our hearts and our minds. Help us to be transformed, Lord. Renew a right spirit within us, Lord God Almighty. Lord Jesus, in your great and precious name. Hallelujah, in Jesus. Great. I've come to say how much I love you. I've come to say how much I adore you.
Today the sun is shining, but I see dark clouds ahead. I don't know which way to turn or what to do. But I found a hiding place where I am safe and secure. Oh!